Once great Atlantic salmon and sea trout runs in Norway's fjords have been heavily impacted by the salmon farming industry. Here, scientists, conservationists, and fish and wildlife enthusiasts have long been concerned about sea lice, viruses, and escaped fish from the farms. Together with their fathers and grandfathers, they fished for this huge salmon, and uh, they very much want to bring it on to the next generation. And all of them think it's uh, a tragedy that it's uh, close to extinction. We are left with two threats that we do know we have to handle in order to save the stock, and that is attack of salmon lice on out-migrating smolts from the stock, and the other is the high percentage of escaped farmed salmon entering the spawning stock. In this river we had counted uh, uh, 200 sea lice on one small fish, and this is uh, deadly. The sea trout is, uh, was vital for this community. Uh, for the tourist industry, but now it's uh, like nothing. Uh, the tourists won't come back. Despite these problems, in August 2009, Norway's then fisheries minister Helga Pedersen suggested the country should be boosting domestic production. Norway has moved to protect certain important wild salmon runs with national salmon fjords, off limits to farms. But even wild salmon runs from these fjords are vulnerable. Uh, they come here to try and catch famous big Norwegian salmon. Outside the boundary of the National Salmon Fjord, there is uh, massive activity with salmon farming. And this is uh, areas which the wild smolts have to migrate through. So uh, there's still a big risk of them being infected by too many sea lice for them to handle. This past May, an international delegation of scientists, conservationists, indigenous and labor leaders from Scotland, Ireland, Chile and Canada journeyed to Norway to present their concerns at the annual general meetings of the two biggest salmon farming corporations in the world, Marine Harvest and Cermak. Hi, Alexander Morton. The Canadian contingent of the delegation included renowned salmon biologist Alexander Morton, Chief Bob Chamberlain, who chairs the First Nations Leadership Council's Aquaculture Working Group, and a representative from the British Columbia wilderness tourism industry who underlined the importance of wild salmon to other iconic species and the coastal tourism economies that depend on them. I have delivered to uh, the folks up here at the front a collection of documents from our tribal council, from some of the First Nation organizations in the province of British Columbia and Canada, all three of them. It is very rare that you'll find the topic that all three will write a letter of support. Salmon is one. One phone call. Two days later I had these letters. Such is the importance of salmon to our people in Canada. The members of the delegation conveyed to the Board of Marine Harvest the frustrations of many in British Columbia about the industry's operations. You're a monolith in which uh, is crushing some very, very vital areas. It's gotten so extreme at this point, we're so low, that many of us, and myself included, think you just need to leave British Columbia or go into closed tanks because you're breaking the basic laws of the salmon. I have to disappoint you. We are not going to leave Canada. Even industry leaders like Marine Harvest CEO Asa Aule Michele and largest shareholder, billionaire John Fredrickson, have publicly acknowledged some of the industry's biggest problems. Sea lice on farm fish can be, th be a threat to wild fish in certain areas. Following a complaint filed by 4UM and Friends of the Earth Norway in May 2009, CERMAC will be assessed for breaching the OECD guidelines for multinational companies concerning production sustainability, employment conditions, and human rights in Canada and Chile. In British Columbia, where Norwegian companies own 92% of salmon farming operations, scientists warn that industry practices could lead to the collapse of once prolific wild salmon runs a resource vital to the province's environment, economy, and indigenous cultures. Despite the science and growing public concern, the industry, backed by the Canadian government, has been quick to dismiss the likely role of salmon farms in catastrophic collapses of certain wild salmon runs. A large Canadian delegation of government and industry representatives, led by the Department of Fisheries and Oceans, DFO, recently attended the world's biggest aquaculture trade show, Aquanor, in Trondheim, Norway to promote salmon farming. Meanwhile, at home, news had just broken of a crisis on Canada's Fraser River, with the collapse of its iconic sockeye run, once one of the world's largest salmon runs. 
Uh, we don't have any uh, uh, concrete analysis of what has happened in the current uh, with the current salmon run, so it's too early to tell. Uh, I'm here in. Uh, Norway to support our aquaculture industry in Canada because it's a very important part of our economy. Many Canadians have been increasingly critical of DFO and its failure to acknowledge and deal with the impacts of salmon farming. These critics include former senior ministry scientists and managers like Otto Langer. I left fisheries in great disillusionment in 2002 and I have seen no improvement. Uh, there's a great conflict of interest within that agency. They are promoting fish farming, and yet they have the Fisheries Act which says they have to conserve and protect fish habitat and protect wild fish. And DFO's critics have good reasons to connect the mainly Norwegian salmon farms to the Fraser Sockeye salmon crisis. We don't know if salmon farms are causing all the impacts on sockeye, but they seem to be a contributing factor and we need to study and, and really take into account how much mortality these salmon farms are, are causing for juvenile sockeye. We have evidence that Fraser sockeye are on those farms, that they're getting lice on them. The industry association paid, uh, paid mouthpieces have already uh, you know, dismissed salmon farms, of course, as, as a cause. They've said that uh, the nearest salmon farms are over 100 kilometers away from the mouth of the Fraser, so therefore the uh, Fraser sockeye aren't at risk. Well, that's absolutely bunk because we've looked at the migration patterns of sockeye, uh, we've looked at their swimming speeds, and we know that they can be around those salmon farms in as few as a few days of, of swimming. And they may stay around those farms for quite a while. Uh, they are vulnerable. Uh, we've heard that they're too large uh, to be affected by uh, salmon farms and lice, and that's absolutely garbage as well because in all the workshops that we've done with European scientists, they'll tell us that the much larger smolts from Europe, the Atlantic salmon and the sea trout, have absolutely been decimated by sea lice from salmon farms. Sea lice are just one of the many ecological impacts from fish farms in Canada. To make matters worse, waste, chemicals and toxins from open net salmon farms empty directly into the ocean, impacting on the entire surrounding marine ecosystem.